Aloha, Netyanandam, good evening. Do a little tech check. Actually, it's day 17, not 16, right? <laughs> Here we go, right? Doing all the things that um, it is what it is, and here we go, right? Just jump. Jump in. Well, welcome. Let's start with uh, opening prayer for communion. You are welcome to say the prayer that you and your tradition vocalize or say. I prefer silence. So let's start prayer. Thank you so much. I would like to start off with the prayer and a moment of silence for the Congolese people and the Congolese man who made the decision to set himself on fire to reach out to the rest of the world, to humanity. If you use technology and um, we are and myself eternally indebted to the Congolese people and their contributions under slavery and um, torture, genocide. Um, there's children as young as four years old being used as slaves to mine the things necessary for the tech companies and for us who are consuming such products. What do we do, right? So let's hold the prayer space to honor and pray for the solutions to come for this injustice to these people. Thank you. So, welcome to day 17 of the 25 days of force majeure Christmas. Uh, why do you do what you do? Especially those here in Hawaii. Why do you do what you do? So... Still in the Christmas full swing and the shopping for gifts and such. I'm advocating that we normalize and consciously perpetuate handmade gifts, did a digital gifts, regifting. Why did I put regifting? Regifting things that are used or loved and part of that lifestyle. If it's not being used, it ends up being hoarding. And normalizing that regifting process, especially those who live on islands like us, once it reaches here, it does not leave. And so it is best to be loved. Right? Is secondhand gifts, consumable gifts, experience gifts, and small business gifts. Let's normalize, normalize those things. Right, just so much that that I was um, going through today, and as you can see, I did my best to whatever. But right now, as I jump in, 
the original order is not the order and that's just how it is whatever is going on is going on um and so uh, start with me i am a i consider myself an exercising my full right as a conscious being landing on planet earth uh, claiming myself to be a secular Hindu quantum catalyst fusionist, starting my own sampradaya, which I am entitled to uh, in Hinduism. Uh, and I consider myself a wise secular because I honor and celebrate every tradition and their subjective truths. Oh, wow. That's what happened. <laughs> Wrong tab that got shared. Here we go, right? I consider myself a secular Hindu. And I honor all traditions. And those traditions are individual, right? So I honor each individual's subjective truths because that's essentially what we're talking about in spirituality is subjective truths. And so... There are those who connect together in those subjective truths and um, gravitate towards each other and make those decisions to live together um, in a given area. So, um, yeah, that's what what it is that I for me that space I hold and for me because I hold that space um, I am putting a kahea or a call out to all the indigenous aboriginal peoples cultures traditions and um, wanting to connect not just connect but also share your subjective truths, oppressions, um, things that uh, should be should be shared and made aware of, especially when we're talking about a global neighborhood. I'm talking about a global neighborhood, and so I would like to what all my want to know all the neighbors who are being subjugated and oppressed. Um, share with me uh, what is going on for them and so for me because it is a global neighborhood uh, starting from that universal truths that are oneness based and then going into the one one dharma which is like one one neighbor in the global neighborhood of uh, peaceful coexistence without initiating force. So, what to do? What to do? What to do? So again, you are here in this cosmos paying rent, and that's why for me, I'm advocating redefining slavery. Uh, when landlords exist, slavery is a built-in construct. And so if there's no masters, there's no slaves. And from my looking into the legalities, for me, I'm concluding that either everyone owns an acre of land or no one owns land. Food forests. I'm advocating for food forests for Kailasa or heaven on Buloka Earth. One of the things is that in Hinduism, temples are universities and education is open source. It's since the time, time without beginning. And as I was, I saw, came across this meme. I came across this meme and the evolution of intellectual freedom, right? And there's a lot of universities who are doing intellectual theft. Um, 
based off of colonizers logic and so um, and it's not just certain colonizers there's different traditions even buddhists who are rejecting the fact that the roots are hinduism and that's also equivalent to intellectual theft in my opinion that's like saying your mom isn't your mom despite you came out came out of her tummy and so i found this very interesting because i did not go the the education route if you will i was mostly homeschooled and i have a very unorthodox education philosophy that i always went to masters who did what they did and learned from them instead of going the um the education route so before grad school this young man is i'm going to research whatever i want and then the grad student i'm going to research whatever my professor wants the assistant professor i'm going to research whatever the tenure committee wants the tenure professor i'm going to research whatever my grant committee wants because they're looking for money right that's where the money talks bullshit walks and I'm going to, so this same young man as his old age, I'm going to research whatever I emeritus professor. Research in peace. <laughs> Rip. Right? So for me, I, I am very blessed due to the level of transparency and straightforwardness that I operate at. I'm blessed to be able to do the research and looking into what I've chosen in uh, transparency of what I do uh, and receive the support that I do. I'm very honored and blessed to be blessed to continue on a no budget budget like for serious even down to food right no budget budget prayer only those who know know they don't know they don't know uh, and i'm here shamelessly just being very straight about it right because no bank account <laughs> no 501c3 no so I'm forced to operate with no box and uh, unorthodox way of going about it. But, you know, even as I look at it, as there's all this investigative journalism, but the thing is everything is controlled, even down to Facebook, right? Facebook is very much controlling the content that I put out, and it's a little bit too precise. And I'm very aware of that, and I've been looking at other options. But as I look around, a lot of that is one one dharma based, right? Specifically Christians, um, with their version <laughs> of free speech as well. And so it gets very interesting on the definitions of what is free speech, freedom of religion, and free speech, right? And I am exercising that full spectrum on the cutting edge and i know even for swamiji and kailasa can barely handle and i would say can't but barely handling that level of um, responsibility i'm taking up So, it gets very, very interesting being me and finding solutions in this. And it's not up to me. It's up to Paramashiva. I just put in my request and Paramashiva himself um, blesses me continuously. So, what is that? For me, I like to attend all of Swamiji's spiritual retreats, including Parmashivoham. There are three levels. 
uh, level one it, today they got the darshan or initiation initiation into nirvikalpa samadhi and yoga spurana well what is nirvikalpa samadhi if you have thoughts those are pain patterns basically you're getting blessed to lower the tps the thoughts per second in your experience in life and that's a huge boon uh, in level two, they got liberation from all karmas, literally just gone. Huge liberation, huge liberation. Things that are in your DNA. Now these these um, retreats are an all day session for the powerful cognitions that empower you to maintain the that uh, thought current, right? And then for those in Parma Shivoham, level three had third eye awakening with the darshan being with Tripurantaka Murti, Baba Samadhi darshan, meaning uh, Swamiji in Baba Samadhi. Baba Samadhi means uh, channeling, uh, channeling this particular um, form of Parama Shiva to give the boons and the blessings of being able to conquer the three demons. Um, I did put the link if you want to go to the link to go check it out. The description is there as per for what is the Tripur, Tripura, Tripurantaka uh, Murti or uh, form of Paramashiva when he uh, assumed the form. So again, I do extend um, an invitation to all indigenous, aboriginal, earth peoples, tribes, and cultures to share with me your, um, your reports. If there is injustices being done, um, to raise awareness and the thing is is i look around and there's just like <laughs> not enough not enough and so that's what i'm um reaching out for but there was an attack uh early this morning on kailasa adi kailasa in bangalore uh, basically i will share the video that they put together as quickly as they could on this situation. <laughs> Nityanandam everyone, I am here from Adhikailash. I wanted to update you that Adhikailash once again under attack. Today morning there were five intruders broke open our temple gate and intruded into our temple property claiming that it is their land and threatening our sannyasis, abusing our sannyasis and using all kinds of bad language and threatening, claiming and not letting us do our temple services, not letting us do live our peaceful normal life. We need 
your support. Thank you, Nityanandam. So what was going on from what I can gather is there were, again, um, attackers attacking or opening up the back end gates to have direct access to the banyan tree and for us the banyan tree is like our mother and it's it's more than our mother because it's a boon a, a kaupataru kaupataru tree is meaning a boon wish fulfilling tree and just having the prasad or a, a fallen leaf organically fallen leaf of the banyan tree brings extreme auspiciousness and blessings to to you and your life and so um anyway apparently they attacked and brought weapons and really as you can see here um desecrated the space on monks and um, they're asking for support and just sharing with you that attack and so um, it's just unfortunate that people choose to do those things and so why am I connecting or reaching out to all indigenous aboriginal peoples and cultures is because Kailasa has a lot of experience being attacked at the ground level and to the point of when it comes to leading at, by example from those humble beginnings to having their own nation Kailasa or Swamiji is really leading the way in that effort and so taking note and looking at Kailasa and how they're going about what they're doing is um, very and essentially at the end of the day it's about linking arms and standing up with those who are walking that righteous path it has nothing to do with a single How should I phrase this? For me, because I am all inclusive and a f I believe in Advaita, oneness, communion, rainbow tribe, right? The rainbow peace tribe. And it takes all of us linking arms to, to connect and communicate as well as work together towards the proper channels and strategies to correct and bring balance to the imbalances caused by colonization global colonizers ex doing spiritual terrorism or consciousness monocropping and it starts there so this is where um since we are in the uh, 25 days force majeure Christmas, getting back on track onto um, what is that. So, dear Santa, define naughty, right? Every tradition, every culture, every nation, every country has their... collectively agreed upon consequences for actions and all of that is about theft rape murder enslavement right and so um, I wanted to share this next video because it's about what is naughty right let's define let's redefine why do you do what you do why do you think what you think why do you have what you have 
So what is this video? I did put a link in the description so you can see it. It's an EMF uh, reader and what, it, what this person is sharing is that just the EMF of the charging of that video game console of touching it, it goes beyond what is normal. And on the bottom here is this, this is only a, a remote imagine a phone or a computer so many of many of us including myself right are um, surrounded by those kinds of technologies and it makes me wonder because of how um, There's a lot of things that are not being shared or disclosed. Like the world went wireless before it was wired and then Nikola Tesla, but that's none of my business. There's a lot of things that when looking at things, what is naughty and what is nice, right? What, what are your definitions? Because when we look around, even with the food, the food is being tampered with. Um, shoot, there was a... The, there's a video that I was watching where Europe doesn't, um, or other countries don't even allow the food that what is normal in grocery stores around America because it's straight up poison. So what is naughty and what is nice, right? Just some silly pictures. I'm on Santa's naughty list because mm -hmm. in the Grinch I tried. <laughs> so what is naughty, what is nice, right? So the basics, going right back to where my feet are, right? Hawaii is not America. And then there's all of those confusions of what is America because Britain is, the Boston's Tea Party is still going on and Britain is winning by inserting themselves through the Federal Reserve. And the, the, the Law Bar Association, British Accredited Regency, the IRS, all of those things. And that's not being straightly said and that's something I challenge the current president and all those who are running presidents, right? To explain this shit, <laughs> right? What I'm tripping up on and, and share that real truth with Americans, right? What is a public citizen? What's a private American, right? What's a US citizen and what is an American citizen? why is that not being straightforwardly said as well as the real land of the free are the earth peoples right first nations peoples because of the freedom of spirituality and so it gets very challenging when we're de talking about generations of hundreds of thousands of years in their dna of oppression of narcissistic abusers right and then there are those kind of norms and such that they feel 
that and then of course there is that um, and then it's on the rat race of trying to earn money just to eat or whatnot and then they kill and bomb so that people are not having peace and so that this is where I was just like really in this meditative space and just when I'm looking around that's all that there is and the best thing to do is try to bring that peace as well not stir the pot even though it's just like yeah let's just go stir the pot but um, how to bring that peace and so I, I'm just kind of making that decision right to go about it the way that I'm going about it and the only legitimate humanitarian law is a global peace treaty right treaties are contracts broken treaties is broken contracts we're talking about maritime admiralty law that's why everything is in corporations or trusts sailing on that imagination water called Mar maritime admiralty <laughs> law and so when there's occupation or war laws of war apply and if they're threatening with a glo uh, world war three it's just like whoa hold up stay <laughs> right no no leave the private sector and citizens or humanity alone and the leaders who want to go and do that they can go settle their differences in the octagon wwf mma style and what happens in there stays what happens in the octagon stays in the octagon and let people go back to their families take care of the land and how quickly will things turn around things will turn around really quickly especially peaceful family happy wife happy life right so global peace treaty is the only actual and factual humanitarian law with applicable remedy and full stop so all of these things yeah yeah all contracts null and void with your feet are here in hawaii birth certificates real estate tmk business credit cards bank loans w2 1099 etc etc everything lawsuits that's why i'm saying naughty or nice let's literally really look at well what is naughty and what is nice yeah force majeure all the way but the humanitarian law that this r guy wrote and he defines legal science um yeah it's not it's a dead end it's a dead end and dead end on purpose so for me i put this out there because everybody's saying some brand of bs right but mine actually make to me makes logical sense so i'm putting it out there uh, yeah i have this fundraiser going but there's no bank account like for serious i don't know what to do and even at that with the bank account all that money or taxation or whatever is going to go fund america and the war and killing bombs and all of that and i'm against it too so what do i do right right now i'm not even sure i whatever is unfolding and happening and in, in full transparency of what is going on that's what's happening here so with that being said in Parmashivoham level three, if you attended Parmashivoham level three, there was homework given. And the homework was to, and they said that we can share this with our friends and those who are watching this. You are welcome to do this homework with us as well and it's called how to deal with enemies these are internal and external enemies so when it when i'm talking about upgrading your decision making matrix with higher cognitions and operating inner space that itself is very very empowering so that you can have a better life right when there's peace 
from the individual with that understanding, empowered understanding with a higher cognition, you begin to radiate that peace within yourself and your family and your community. So let's watch this quick video. One story from my own experience, my own life. When multi layered attacks from multiple gangs done on me, all I know is I am Paramashiva, I cannot be destroyed. All these attacks, which comes like a destruction, I know how to just change them and be in the space of rejuvenation. <laughs> Various gangs attack. due to their vested interests. Hi, I'm Zoe Gong. As a traditional Chinese medicine chef and food therapist, I love using Squarespace to share my recipes. And there are some people who wage the war. There are some people who try to war benefit here. They did not wage the war. It's like a jackal, culinary, never attacks the elephant. But when there was a fight between the lion and elephant, if the elephant is not able to walk and collapses, this jackal goes and this culinary goes and tries to eat the flesh of the elephant. That is called war benefiteering. I have seen all kinds of people who wage war in the front side, who wage war from the back side, and traitors, war benefiteers. <laughs> there are some traitors who don't even do the job of traitor. But they try to get the benefit of the war. <laughs> war benefiteers. Like culinaries, jackals, foxes, wolves. Some are even like eagles. I have seen all kinds of things. I don't even want to name those gangs, groups, which attack. Because, listen carefully, this is one of the most beautiful strategy of Krishna. It doesn't mean his enemies. Well, you know, he says, hey, because many times who try to attack you, they think you are weak, so they attack you. But when you prove you are strong and successful, they change their strategy and they decide not to be your enemy anymore. But if you name them as enemies because they have to defend themselves, protect themselves, they continue to be in the sp space of enmity. If you don't name the enemies, many people lose their enmity and carry on with their life and they are no more in your enemy list. Listen. <laughs> this is a different plane. Revelation. So a king, a leader should never name enemies. He should only handle the attacks which comes in front of him. So almost 99% of the people drop their enmity and carry on with their work if they know that enemy is too strong with whom they are trying to fight. Everyone tries to attack only the weak people. But when they see, wow, it's too big, nothing can be done. Come on, carry on with our life, go. 
a good leader never names enemies <laughs> he forgives does not forget and never names <laughs> that is what paramashiva having alahala poison in his throat neither goes inside means see poison going inside means like he has to react neither goes inside nor he spits out neither he utters the name so neither i allow my enemies to destroy me nor i name them they are there just in the throat in ganta in that's why neela ganta mahadeva never allows the poison to kill him nor he names out i forgive and i don't allow anyone to destroy me i don't forget and i don't name multi layered intelligence and understanding needed for any leader if you want to become a leader take this same strategy do not allow your enemies to destroy you forgive them because if you don't carry the anger vengeance you will live your life you will not be living the life fighting with them or the way they want you to live listen engaging in a war means you are living the life they want you to live so they become the master of your life don't allow not responding to the duels of dwandva is the strategy for success whenever your mind tries to internally fight with you with your self doubt self hatred self denial even inside you use the same strategy understand the enemy who is attacking you from outside and the enemy who is sitting inside you and attacking you you are self doubt self hatred self denial both are one and the same don't try to respond to them if you try if you start conversation with your sdhd self doubt self hatred self denial you have started losing argument you have started losing war so even when you deal with your enemies i am telling you listen don't allow them to destroy you don't allow the anger and vengeance and reactionary pattern to be triggered by them don't allow the poison they dump on you to go inside you same way don't even name them like ala hala sitting in the neck throat of paramashiva neither it goes inside and kills paramashiva forget about killing paramashiva how can you kill no nor it goes out and kills others and it does not even come out through his tongue it is just stuck and sealed <laughs> Hi. I'm Sam Jordan. Dark. So, that was today's homework in Parama Shivoham level 3. The other part of this homework, if you would like to receive the blessings to have your internal and external enemies 
once and for all cleared out of your mind because what is Swamiji uh, training us for is to remain in samadhi, meaning no thoughts. And that is um, how to get to those powerful cognitions through the day is uh, those, those techniques, strategies are taught. And then, of course, um, sealed with the darshan. The darshan is a, an initiation, is a very high vibrational space that gets channeled through Swamiji and fused into our, our bioenergy, biomemory, <laughs> DNA, um, even down to like that atomic level. That's what um, Hindu science is, is all about, is at that uh, high vibrational atomic level. And so uh, if you, I put the link in the description. If you uh, put in the comments of this video uh, your, the things that you're dealing with, you can even name your enemies and he will give the blessings. And so um, that's... That is that. So let's. Uh, I want to share another fun video of. Let's think about what is really naughty or nice, right? What is naughty? What is nice? Santa here, right? This guy is riding it. He makes his own turbo jet pack or something and he makes videos and he totally looks like a Santa. I'm going to share it again because I just think it's so fun. <laughs> naughty or and what is nice so I want to we're going to go into a, uh, a meditation called unclutching this is the ultimate meditation to be mastered and practiced daily because it is the not only the only meditation to help um, gain center from daily stresses from and uh, vacation from the mind but it's also the only meditation that will help everybody on their deathbed uh, for us we believe in reincarnation so it's just changing body or which is like changing clothes but um I made the decision today, yeah, I can report upon all this and that, this and that, and I'd rather stay in integrity, which, would, what is my integrity? Linking arms of indigenous aboriginal people and cultures, actually all, all that are oppressed, but there's too much focus on only specific groups, and then everyone is claiming um, injustice is done and then also from my perspective because everyone is moving and being displaced or whatever they end up choosing sides of a team that is uh, oppressing earth peoples like in America right both sides doesn't matter if you're a US citizen or uh, an American citizen they will gang up together to take land from the Native Americans and then call them um, immigrants 
when in fact they are the original peoples there. So, and and since the Boston Tea Party is still going on, depending on who you talk to, I mean, even for me, I'm like, no, I'm standing in pre Pa'au, but it's not even pre Pa'au. I'm like, no, we're going to the place where families can govern themselves again, right? We have that right, especially mothers. We are the ones who bring life and trusted to navigate life to planet Earth. We have every right to have our own country, if we were talking about trusts and corporations and this and that and whatever, we have that right, as well as to have our own currency. And if everything's going digital and actually it would be based on, if it's a one-one trade, right, and we round everybody up with the number of hours by 80 years or 120 years, whatever you want to call it, right, that's quantified right so why don't why don't we go there that's where i'm trying to go and i'm very appreciative for the contributions swamiji has done and kailasa has but i'm over here and being like yeah no i'm not looking at there i'm looking at where i'm looking at (laughs) all right i love you right i love you I love you, I love you, but that's not what I'm looking at. And Swamiji knows this, not everybody does. That's why he and I, I try to get along with him, but we have, uh, we're unique beings. He has his own things and whatever that he's, whatever, whatever, right? And I respect that. And, you know, with Guru, okay, yes, I accept Swamiji as Guru. I, I have all other Gurus, my Kula Guru, Nichiren Daishoni, and he was a freaking lion and scrapper too. So that's where I get my, my feistiness, if you will. But, um, yeah, get all of those things. And in that blessing of cosmos shining through me, I definitely need a lot of unclutching meditation, power manifest. I actually like to do the power manifestations, um, but unclutching meditation as well. And so I made that decision that we're just going to do unclutching every day uh, so that those who come and watch um, will get the blessings of the unclutching. This technique is not even to be practiced every day, no. This is supposed to be practiced effortlessly, internalized effortlessly. Suddenly, like one day, you will unclutch. From the very desire of holding on to this body, you will just unclutch. Now, close your eyes for a few minutes. I'll guide you how to consider the desires and how to suddenly unclutch from it before your mind brings any argument. Please close your eyes. Sit in a relaxed way. If some desires are arising in you, maybe desire to open your eyes or desire to move your body, any desire, just see that desire don't judge there may be so many desires do not witness do not judge do not say right or wrong do not suppress just see
don't say don't think your desire is right or wrong just see it let your eyes be closed let them come when desires arise let them happen Let all the desires arise in you. Don't suppress them. Don't judge them. Don't say they are right or wrong. Just let them happen. Consider. Let them happen.
suddenly before even your mind recognizes unclutch from all the desire and relax do not argue do not logically decide do not decide based on right or wrong just unclutch from all the thoughts your eyes be closed just untouch from all the thoughts anything comes up just unclutch just disconnect don't judge don't say it is right don't say it is wrong just disconnect unclutch
Nityanandam. Relax. Slowly, very slowly. You can open your eyes. Try. I did put the link to the untouching meditation in the description. Um, going forward, I believe I'm going to just be doing this every day because in order for all of us, for world peace, there has to be individual peace. And so there's one more video I'd like to share, which is to something I Growing up as a Vietnamese. I found very interesting that I feel that everyone would benefit from a perspective. So this is a very interesting perspective. Growing up as a Vietnamese, I was used to the standard that men should be tough, strong, aggressive, so no one can mess with him. The man I ended up being with is soft-spoken, doesn't raise his voice when he's annoyed, and he cries when he feels like it which made me quite concerned at the beginning if he can't even protect me. As time went by, I realized that chances of him needing to rescue me from a bear was quite low, but the risk of me getting attacked by my own partner is way higher. I've never felt threatened by this man, although he is way stronger than me. He is emotionally available and he made me feel safe even when we had hated arguments. What I did not like about him at first turned out to be his best quality. I was just too young and dumb to see that. different perspectives of the family unit, right? That's what I'm about. It's the family unit, the building blocks of society, humanity as a whole. And so, yeah, just sharing that perspective. Thank you so much for listening. I would like to close with prayers of peace. Peace for you, peace for me, global peace. Thank you so much. Aloha, Nityanandam. Have a good evening.